observing today the feast, the commemoration of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. And boy, for us in Kentucky, it's our, our principal feast, the feast of Our Lady of Mount Carmel, our little chapel, Our Lady of Mount Carmel Chapel. And good to be back here in Texas and Dallas on the way back to heading off now from here to Dublin to visit a couple of priests, maybe three, three or four priests in Ireland. But now four priests of the resistance in Ireland, uh, Father McDonald and Father Buffet. We should see them tomorrow morning and then possibly the next day, Father Kramer and Father Bellini in, uh, in Ireland. And then over to England, we'll also see Father Fuchs. And, uh, and, uh, and so the uh, number of priests are Increase, slowly increasing, continue to increase in the resistance, and uh, and then there's a short visit over there for the weekend, then back uh, back to Kentucky. And so a few considerations on this feast day, then and the Father and the Son of the Ghost, Amen. <clears throat> this feast, July the 16th, in fact, is a feast that's an ancient scandal. And we have a new one now, August the 22nd, in the 20th century, the Feast of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And it's interesting, this feast, you know, it says in, it says in the old, in the Missal here, the commemoration of Our Lady at Mount Carmel. You know that we always have, we have feast days, we got the Feast of St. George, we got the Feast of St. Felicitas, the Feast of St. Perpetua, but there is no Feast of Our Lady at Mount Carmel. Even on this very day, which is the day that we consider Our Lady of Mount Carmel, it was churchmen, bishops. A great court case happened 800 years ago about this day and about the Carmelite order. And there were Dominicans, and there were Franciscans, and there were other members of the Augustinians who said, Carmel is fake. There is no Our Lady of Mount Carmel. And that the feast day is false. And therefore they refused to call it a feast. And there was a trial. A trial. And the trial was to prove that the Carmelites were not the oldest order in the church. And so the Carmelites, which are the oldest order in the Catholic Church, they were founded 800 years before Christ by Elias the prophet. After Elias killed the 400 priests of Baal, he had left some monks on the side of the mountain to pray and to wait for the coming of the Messiah. And these monks were there 800 years later when Christ came. And they converted on the Mount Carmel. Mount Carmel, you know, is a mountain in Israel that sits upon the Mediterranean Sea. And when Mount Carmel was, uh, uh, the, these monks converted, they remained monks on that mountain until the Muslims came. And the Muslims came and drove them off the mountain. And they fled into Europe. And when they fled into Europe, they received more persecution from the Catholics in Europe than they received from the Muslims in Israel. And they were not accepted. They went to England, they went to Spain, they went to France, they went to Italy, and everyone rejected them. Said, You're not monks, we don't like you. And they tried to prove that they were not really monks. And there was no such thing as a Lady of Mount Carmel. And in fact, it's interesting to note here on this feast, which is not a feast, the only feast in the entire church, in which it says commemoration. And when you flip to the can to the canon of the mass, it says at te in, in uh, the, the all the different feasts of Our Lady at the festivitate, and then it says on July 16th at the commemorazione. We have to say commemorazione because. Wicked churchmen decided that Our Lady could not have this feast. And they wanted to crush out this feast. But somehow, July 16th still became the day of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. And somehow, the love of Our Lady of Mount Carmel still spread throughout the church. And somehow, churches of Our Lady of Mount Carmel still happen. And so today is the day to consider... What are the mysteries of our holy church? And that is the mystery of clerical scandal. God allowed this to happen from the very beginning. We read in the, in the gospel, the apostles fought amongst one another. You know that when you, when you visit the church on Sundays, you see it's very holy. The priest has very holy vestments. 
He says very holy things. He looks very spiritual. He speaks with a supernatural voice. And it's a holy place. But then the day comes when you get to meet Padre and learn that Padre has got problems. And then you learn that the three or four Padres live together in what's called a religious house. You may have heard of gossip. You may have heard of evil words that exist in families. And this is soft stuff. Little stuff compared to the evil that happens amongst the priests. Just recently, in fact, the last three years, multiple priests told me about the great, greatest evils of prostitution, the greatest evils of homosexuality, the greatest evils of theft, the greatest evils of evil words, the greatest evils of heresy, the greatest wickedness of Satanism it is all found in the city of Rome. And it is stronger there than anywhere else on earth. So that we see that Our Lady of La Salette, when she said, Rome shall become the seat of the Antichrist. And she knew what she was talking about, and she wasn't saying idle words. Seat means the power, the place of power. So that they are, where there is the strength of the Antichrist will be found in, the Ro in Rome. Just like 2,000 years ago, there were many people who hated our Lord Jesus Christ. There were many that wanted him dead. There were many that were very happy on the day of his crucifixion, but none happier than Caiaphas, none happier than Annas, priests of God. No, true priests. They were the last priests of the Old Testament, but they were true priests. And they were in hell now as priests, not as laymen. And so there's a lot of mystery of the priesthood and the mystery of the religious life. And one of the mysteries is the main scandal. How is it that in the Holy Missal, in the old Allah Missal, we won't allow Our Lady of Carmel to be a How is that? Why does she allow it? The commemorated of Our Lady of Mount Fresno. Because some there was Dominicans and wicked Franciscans who were very angry that the old and older order they were in the Augustus who thought they were at the oldest Carmelite were angry at the these Benedictine order these, these Carmelites they put the whole night for on trial said all right the Carmelites the old night if we have to do if we are not founders order all you have to do is find our founder be too hard which find our founder which heritage Saint us, or we the founding founder was us because our founded us a lie years before Christ. And he found the 800 Carmelite Christ Testament and they first of the new no matter how they went, they could have been more common far back. How far back they were back, they were more like Carmelites. And they were detected, they went to find the more Carmelite, but they didn't find them. Herman or Ang first, they put it. And then they proved they were the oldest order of the church. And then that the trial took place, or in England, was one of the places where the trial took place. And you even read the Carmelite history book, place, and they don't know exactly how they began. For instance, books, one thing we don't know, know what color their habit was. Some more black, some more white, some more white, some more black. Because they were so ancient, these monks, they came from the mountain of, of, of the Carmel, and they came to Europe. And their, the, the, these monks lived their monastic life as it was handed down to them by Elias. And there were churchmen that were angry, and they didn't want Our Lady of Mount Carmel to be a feast. Other churchmen in the 20th century committed a similar scandal. Our Lady of the, the Immaculate Heart of Mary, August 22nd, it should be a principal feast and not the eighth day of the octave of the Assumption. There should be a first-class feast because it is a requirement of heaven that the entire earth be constant, the Russia be constantly the Magdalene Heart of Mary, and the devotion of the Magdalene Heart of Mary is essential to the salvation of the world in our times. And so what did Pius XII do? He made it a second-class feast. Better than Our Lady of Mount Carmel. And he pretended as though it was obedient to heaven when he was disobedient to heaven. 
And there are many other scandals in the church. But this very feast is a feast that shows, we, we still call it a feast, we call it a feast, but you can't find the word in the missal. It won't allow it to be a feast. And they make sure it's fourth class. You know how many of third class feasts of Our Lady there are? It's fourth class. It's a commemoration. And it is not allowed that it be a feast. And with the persecution of Our Lady. But what happened? Our Lady still has her victory. There are still many, many churches of Lady of Mount Carmel as much as these men never wanted it to happen. The Carmelite order still survived as much as they didn't want it to happen. It was reformed by St. Teresa and St. John of the Cross. It didn't allow it, so it wasn't allowed to collapse. And even after Vatican II, we find that Carmelites have survived, have reformed, and stayed within Catholic tradition. And so that God has allowed many orders to collapse. There's no traditional Augustinians. The most famous Augustinian was Martin Luther, after St. Augustine. And he went the wrong way. But God has preserved the Lady of Mount Carmel. And when we look at the, and, then, and also our Lord allowed, why is it that he allows sinners in his church? Why does he allow scandals? He himself said, it must needs be that scandals come. It must needs be. He didn't say scandals are a tragic thing. He said, it must needs be that scandals come. But woe to, whom, to him by whom the scandal comes. But it must needs be that there be scandals. Scandals somehow are necessary for the chiseling of saints. Scandals are, scandals are necessary somehow for the perfection of the church. It was Caiaphas and Annas and the greatest scandal in history who used their priesthood and the power of their priesthood, Caiaphas being the high priest, the pope of the last pope of the Old Testament, and the old great priest of that time who used their priesthood to bring about the crucifixion of Christ. And to cause souls to leave Christ in the name of holiness, in the name of Moses, in the name of the Old Testament. And there will be many priests and many bishops down the whole 2,000 years of the church who in the name of holiness will lead souls away from God. And it must needs be that scandals will come. It must happen. There is no other way God made things this way. It was some of the saints say in the Middle Ages, why does God allow scandals? Why does God allow evil things to happen? Why does God allow evil men to live? Why does God allow tyrants and wickedness and all manner of evil to continue in the world? Because each of them is a chisel. A chisel is designed to shape saints. The thing about chisels, I forget which saints said it in the Middle Ages, Chisels are used to carve statues. When the statue is carved, you throw the chisel away and you keep the statue. And so God allows there to be wicked things, wicked events, wicked men. Remember, not only wicked men, but also good men do wicked things, such as St. Peter and the apostles who fled in the garden, such as St. Augustine. St. Peter even afterwards, who made the mistake of the Judea, accepting the Judaizers. And God allows even good men to do wicked things. And he allows wicked men to do wicked things. And he allows mediocre men to do wicked things. And why does he allow all these wicked things? Why does he allow all these scandals? In order to chisel saints. Because God made this world into a saint factory. God made this world into a place that is designed to give him glory. And Satan came in to rip it apart. And there are wicked priests in the Council of Trent, wicked priests in the Council of Florence, wicked priests who are involved in making sure that this day, July 16th, would not be a feast. Didn't they have something to do? And they made sure that there was a special word, commemoration, only for this feast. When we use this word, commemoration, for any time, there was no feast, and yet the commemoration is called On this feast, is commemoration today, even in the preface, in the matter, and it says, we will say, commemoration, because in the title priest, memorats, hated our Carmel, does such that he allowed the world lady of Christ to be so much, it wouldn't have been in the middle of the feast, it would have years later, and it remains, so, it remains, hundred years stone, so, and without it, it's written, 
and this not many other scholars. What is he allowing? He allows God. What is for the best? And it's hard for us to understand how God can allow things. That's the one thing God allow it. How Pope, such as Pope Francis, and how Pope Benedict, and look at Pope Paul VI, and John Paul II, and so on. And Pope, how can God allow and wicked bishops? And how can God allow wicked priests? How can God allow a wicked faith? How, how can God allow a wicked scandal? How, our Lord himself said in Matthew chapter 13 that there will be seeds and wheat inside the dark. Wheat. There will be cockle and there will be wheat. And there will also be sometimes men of goodwill who will find themselves doing wicked things. And God will allow it. Why? To show his divine power. It was made clear multiple times in the Old Testament particularly in the battle of Gideon. When Gideon came with 30,000 soldiers, and our Lord was offended that he came with 30,000 soldiers. God said, go get volunteers to fight against the 60,000 or 80,000 enemies of God. And they came with 30,000. He said, it's too many. Because if you win with 30,000 against 60,000, you will think you had the victory. When it must be known that it is only God that gives the victory. Therefore, tell those that are afraid to go home. And 20,000 went home. And 10,000 remained. And God was still offended because it was too many. And finally, it was 300 soldiers. 300 soldiers. So the victory would be clearly God's. When Goliath was defeated by David, it was clearly God that gave the victory. And when Gideon defeated the Amorites, it was clearly God that gave him the victory. And when Moses told, told uh, the, uh, Aaron, the weak priest, who would build the golden calf only a few weeks later, when God told Aaron through Moses, lift up your staff and command the water to separate, it's separated by the power of God through the words of Aaron. And when Moses gave the staff to Aaron again and said, Now lift it up again and tell the waters to close. So it closed and killed all the armies of the Pharaoh. And then that same Aaron would build a golden calf only a few weeks later. God gave the victory. And in our times it is the same. It will always be the same. God wants to make it clear that He is the one who makes His church holy. He is the one that sanctifies. And therefore he allows that there be sinful priests. Not only does he allow it, he wishes it. He does not wish their sinfulness, but he wishes for the faithful to see that there are weak priests and weak ministers that they might know that it is God that gives absolution through the hand of the priest. It is God that makes Christ come upon the altar through the hand and mouth of the priest. And that the priest's sinfulness is overcome by the goodness and power of God. And so therefore, he allows that there be scandals. Because without them, we would lose our faith. And without them, we would put confidence in ourselves. And without them, we would become so proud that we could never be pleasing to God. And therefore, for the good of our souls, God allows that there be scandals. And God allows that there be struggles and that there be fights. He allows these things. He allows that a feast that should be one of the greatest feasts of the church be called only a commemoration. He allows that a pope who called himself the Pope of Fatima should disobey Fatima and yet still feel innocent because he made a second class feast of Our Lady of the Immaculate, of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And so he covered his conscience and disobeyed Mary. And another pope, a few, about 800 years ago, allowed this to happen. Allowed it to be only a commemoration, and not a feast of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. And though the Carmelites were found innocent in that trial, and there were several trials, though they were found innocent, they were still left with a mark upon them. And yet God made Our Lady of Mount Carmel still grow in love and popularity throughout the church in the last 800 years, despite the best efforts of churchmen to stop her glory. Why is it, what does this show? The great power of heaven. And we must remember the great power of heaven. We're in a great crisis in the church right now, and the crisis shall be conquered 
It shall be overcome by the power of heaven. And if it was because of good men and the power of men, you should be suicidal right now. You, have, you should be oppressed right now. And if you, by any hope, have a moron. God. We know if we have some confidence in God, and if it is of the power from God, it, then it's foolish to act confidence. Because it's foolish to lack of confidence. God can, because God can never be needed. God will never be stopped. If God sends his church, he will overcome Satan. He will overcome Satan. Those will use him. He will overcome Satan. Overcome, no matter how many judgments are, he will use him. And what Satan does, uh, he wishes, is the verb he wishes. He wants of us. He pray for that virtue of faith. Version of and so let's pray for our version. See the big of supernatural deep into our life. And the scales of actual life in the battles, handles, the plot of the church, in the battle, battles of the resistance race. We have the battle, we have a little mainstream in our little relations. Battles in the battles in the Holy Mother, the names of such. The battle is scattered out of our lights and pretty shirts. When the great high priest was in a fight with the priests, they have a priest by Latin. It's a, when a man, it's a man saying lupus, which means man fights from lupus. Woman fights as wolf, lupus. Which means when a woman, a woman we are. And when a priest means rights of priest, Lupici. Priest fights most wolves. Against man, which means wolf. Man against woman, who we are. Or wolf. Woman against but priest, Lupici. Priest. And the great fight of priest against priest was the high priest Jesus Christ against the well, high priest. Priest Caiaphas. And against that fight, priest, which Pius knew who was the man of God. And he was the enemy of God. And Pilate was not said he knew not because of their jealousy and their enmity that they had to him over. Caiaphas did not hand over Jesus Christ because he didn't know God. He didn't hand over Jesus Christ because he thought he was a heretic. He didn't hand over Christ because he thought he was bad to people. He didn't hand him over because he was jealous. Because he, that's what handed him over. For the most small and disgusting reasons, he brought Christ to crucifixion. See, envy and jealousy. And God allowed this to happen. God allowed it to happen. There will be fights between priests. There will be fights between women, even though it almost never happens. There will be fights between men. There will be scandals in the church until the ending of time. And who has the faith to see through it? Who has the faith to see that God will still bring the victory as this priest fights that one, and this one's an idiot, and that one's an idiot, and they're both fighting each other? And yet, they still say, Ego te absolvo, and sins are forgiven. They still say, Hocus in the meum corpus, Hocus in the corpus meum, and Christ enters into the host. They still are instruments of the grace of God. How can this be? It cannot be because of the power and strength of the man who is a priest. It is only the power and strength of the good God. And when we have faith, we see the beauty of God's working in this weak world. The beauty of God's grace inside of a church filled with the most terrible sinners. And then it is easy for us to understand how the wicked Pope Francis and the wicked local bishop, and the wicked priests, by one movement of the grace of God, they can be converted. By one movement of the grace of God, they can change from the instruments of hell to the instruments of heaven. Just one movement of the grace of God. And all we do is pray for that moment to come when the Holy Mother will convert the wicked Pope and turn him into a good Pope. When the Holy Mother will turn those wicked bishops into good bishops. But they will still be sinners even when they become good. And they will still have struggles even when they become good. And they will still have to fight against the, te the temptations of the world, the flesh, and the devil, even when they become good. And yet, our Holy Mother, the Church, is going to have her victory in the midst of great scandals, in the midst of great fights. They keep bringing out more and more scandals about the Church today. It will not destroy it. And the devil knows it. He is very angry. The church will have her victory over Satan. And God will use sinners, as he always has, to bring about the victory. And we ask God to help us to have a deep faith, to see that faith in the real supernatural battle that we are undergoing right now.
and Our Lady is the one who teaches to understand the supernatural and the daily fight in this crisis in the church. Those so I bless you all, and the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.